Today I would like to present a new Promote Control firmware version. This version 2.25 beta adds a long-awaited feature to Promote Control, that is ability to do focus stacking. At this time it is only compatible with Canon cameras that have live view on their rear LCD that includes 5D Mark II, 1D Mark IV and some others. Future firmware updates will extend this compatibility list even further. The new focus stacking firmware can be downloaded on Promote Systems website in the support section. To go there, you would log in to www.promotesystems.com and click on support. I would like to know that there is a beta firmware, which means it has not been tested on all possible cameras with different combinations of settings. So please make sure you have some time to give it a test with your camera if you plan on going to the field with it. If you find any issues with it, you can always put a previous firmware version into your promote control. At this moment 2.20 is the latest official release, which you can also download from promote control website. So what is focus stacking? Imagine you have a situation where you need a large depth of field in your shot, for example macro photography, an interior shot, etc. You would normally achieve greater depth of field by stepping down your aperture, and this approach may, uh, not, may, may not be the best. In some situations you need both a reasonably fast shutter speed and a low ISO setting to minimize noise, and at the same time you cannot increase amount of light indefinitely. All this effectively limits your flexibility with aperture. This is where focus stacking comes in. You simply focus your camera on a few consecutive points and then stack resulting images together in a software program. The result is a perfectly sharp image where both near and far objects are in focus. Where Promote Control firmware update comes in is uh, it replaces a computer. Before a computer was required in order to automate camera focusing uh, in the field and with a new Promote Control firmware this can be done automatically without a computer. So in this video we will use a popular Canon 5D Mark II camera. And to begin let's connect Promote Control to the camera with a USB cord. Note that we only need USB cable for the focus stacking. Even if the shutter cable is connected it will be ignored in the focus stacking mode. This is because shutter cable operation is not guaranteed with live view and focus stacking relies on live view very heavily so we cannot use shutter cable. So after connecting USB cable, we turn on both camera and remote control. And if the remote control is not in the focus sticking mode already, we would click mode button until we get to the focus sticking mode. A few prerequisites for the focus sticking mode are as follows. First of all, camera and lens have to be in autofocus mode. An autofocus must be set to one shot, not AI servo or anything, um, anything like that. This is contrary to other modes in Promote Control, which require manual focus. Uh, the focus sticking mode relies on being able to drive lens focusing mechanism, and that of course requires camera to be able to automatically focus the lens. The second is the camera must be in manual exposure mode. This is the same as with other Promote Control modes. And here is a useful hint for those new to Canon system. If you're not sure which exposure to use for the manual mode, check out the little exposure indicator on the bottom of your top camera LCD. A little blinking dot in the bottom indicates how close you are to the ideal exposure and by varying your exposure and zeroing down that indicator, you can ensure that your manual exposure is now ideal. The third is camera must be on a tripod. For this video we will keep the camera on the desk, but the most important thing is to ensure the camera position is stable and is not changed during the shooting sequence. The fourth is make sure you check out your memory card free space. Focus staking, just like HDR, tends to fill memory cards very quickly, and if your card is filled up in the middle of the sequence, you will not have the time to replace it, and the sequence will have to be restarted. To configure focus staking, we will begin with changing our step on Promote Control, the first setting in the focus staking mode, from none to any other value. This step value will control how far your lens will travel in the focus. 
Depending on your lens, you might want to use different steps. Macro lenses might require small steps, while wide angles might need large steps. To magnify the difference, we will use large step in this example. As soon as you change the step to anything other than none or reset, Promote Control tells the camera to activate its live view mode. If the live view mode cannot be activated, an error message may be shown on the Promote Control. In that case, please power down both camera and Promote Control, then turn them back on and try again. So now we can see the actual image on the camera LCD. We begin by focusing our camera using our camera auto focus or by manual focus override to the closest position where we want to start our focus bracketing sequence. Promote control uses the concept of focusing range for focus bracketing. There are two points, start and end. Both of them default to zero, which means that focus staking range is empty. Let's change the end setting by scrolling there and clicking up a few times on Promote Control. You can see how the lens focuses farther away with each button click, and the amount it travels will depend on the step setting. If you feel like step setting is inadequate for the task, uh, go back and change it to something more su suitable. We can now try medium setting. And then refocus our lens on the closest position. And try setting our end point again. Note that every time you refocus your lens manually, as opposed to using promote control settings, you must reset the step value to none and then back to your preferred step size. Just like this. This is because camera does not tell promote control that it has been refocused manually, and promote control needs to know how far it should drive your lens. So again, if you refocus your lens manually or with a camera autofocus outside of the promote control, always reset your step and redo your focusing positions. Let's try setting our positions again. Go to the end position and scroll a little further. So once we're done setting the range, let's specify the number of images we want taken in that range. By default, every click you made will result in an image, but that may result in too many images. So you can reduce the number of images by changing the frame setting. Let's say we only need seven. So once you're happy with your settings, go ahead and click Start. So the promote control now is driving our camera focus back to the beginning of the chosen range and then starts making pictures trying to fit the number of frames you specified within the focus interval you have chosen. When done, Promote Control will leave your lens focused at the same position where it was before you began shooting. You can go to the end setting and adjust it if you don't like the result you have just obtained. Don't forget that you cannot manually focus the camera or you will need to reset your step as shown before. It is also possible to begin from the farthest point and work towards the closest. So to do that, we will focus the camera on the farthest point first. Then we will reset our step.
and instead of tweaking the end point, we will change the start point using the down button and scroll it backwards. So you will see the camera is driving its focus back and the start point is changing towards more negative numbers. Once you reach the required point, set the number of frames as desired. Let's say we only need five in this case. And then click start on promote. Once we do that, the camera will drive the lens back to the farthest point first and then proceed from there, gradually focusing closer and closer until it reaches the point you have just specified. A uh, few words of caution. Canon cameras do not report whether focusing attempt was successful or not. If your lens is at one of the focusing extremes and you try to drive it past that extreme, it won't go there. But promote control will assume that it worked and this will result in an incorrect focusing sequence. If you happen to hit your lens focusing limits, make sure to reset your step and then reconfigure your settings. Sometimes Canon cameras may stop reacting to external focusing commands. If this happens, simply turn the camera and promote control off and then turn it back on. After this, focus taking should function as expected. Finally, once you begin setting your focusing settings using endpoint, you should continue using the endpoint or your positions will have to be reset. Again, the reason is that we do not have absolute control over focusing positions. We can only tell camera to jump back or forth. If you find yourself lost, start from the beginning which is manually pre-focus to the beginning of the range, reset your step, and then extend your end position to the desired point. When you are done, you can use any commercial software capable of processing images for focus stacking to get the final result. One option is to use Adobe Photoshop CS4 or higher, and there is a number of other popular software titles capable of producing focus stack images.